everybody out there in the Cosiverse. Welcome to Costume Trek. I'm Brian, and today I'm doing another quick toot. Today's toot is how to make a kilt. Now, this is certainly not the only way to make a kilt. There's a bunch of videos out there on how to fold and make kilts, but this is how I made my later period, more formal style kilt. And if I can do it, you can do it too. I first started with a kilt that I already own to use as a guide. This kilt was made by TripNYC.com but is no longer available on their website. The two things I like best about it are the type of pleat they used and the overall length of the kilt. The material I'm using is 100% fine wool purchased from Mood Fabrics on a recent trip to New York City. I really liked how fine the weave was and the colors of the plaid and knew that a new kilt was on the horizon for me. Let's get started. The main tools you'll be using for this project are the ironing board and the sewing machine. I took a rough measurement of my waist and cut three times that length of fabric to allow for the pleats and darts in the waistline. I also added two whole plaid patterns more than the finished length, one for the top seam and one for the bottom hem. You want to make sure you have enough material for the finished kilt and to keep the plaid pattern consistent with the kilt's overall shape. You don't want any diagonal creases or stitches running through the plaid pattern as this will stand out and look like an obvious mistake. Next, I laid out the material on a table and started pinning in my pleats. Following along with the pattern in the plaid, I used a box pleat because I prefer that look over the simple knife pleat and it gathers more material for overall coverage. But you can do whatever you want. Some people prefer the knife pleat. A fitted kilt has two flat panels in it. One smaller panel that goes on the inside and a larger panel that fully displays the unfolded plaid pattern across the front of the wearer. The pleats need to be oriented with the plaid pattern to allow for this, which means they will be off-centered from the overall middle of the original piece of fabric. For this kilt, I had eight pleats, but your number of pleats may vary. At this point, I did a quick fitting to make sure everything was going in the right direction. Then I ironed the entire length of the pleats. Using a plain straight stitch with about a quarter inch seam allowance, I sewed the fronts of the pleats first to where I wanted the gather to end, then backstitched across the gap between the gathers a couple of times as there will be a lot of stress there. Then I continued up the other side. Next, I sewed the entire length of the inside of the gathers with as narrow of a seam allowance as I could, about an eighth of an inch. This will help to keep the creases sharp and aid in ironing the pleats later on during normal cleaning and use. When I finished the box pleats, I folded over and ironed the top of my waistline using the plaid as a reference point. Now the kilt has a defined inside and outside. I next marked out darts on the inside of the kilt between the pleats to gather up additional material. You may not need to do this if the pattern in your plaid is narrower and you have more pleats to begin with. Back over to the ironing board, I ironed in the darts, folded over the waistline and ironed it, and pinned it into place. This gives the waistline a generous curve and allows the kilt to fit more comfortably and securely without a belt. Then I stitched everything down, starting with the top waistline stitch, then the lower stitch. Next, I confirmed my overall length, left enough for a hemline to match the plaid pattern, and cut off the excess. Then I folded over the hem, ironed it down, and sewed it into place. First the lower stitch, then the upper. I then re-stitched the inside creases on the hem edges of the pleats that were now hanging open. Finally, on the flat panels, I trimmed the excess material to match the plaid pattern, folded it over and ironed it down, pinned the edges, then stitched them closed. At this point, your kilt is essentially complete. It can be worn with just a belt without issue. For mine, I added a button to the inside panel and an adjustable decorative buckle on the outside, just in case I want to wear mine without a belt. And here's the finished product. And remember guys, if you're wearing underwear, it's a skirt. So if you want to experience the world one costume at a time with us, subscribe, ring that bell, follow us on Facebook and Instagram.
and check out our website, CostumeTrek.com. See you next time.